welcome to North Queensland. This is um, by far the best time of the year to be here. Uh, it's at its very best. It puts on its greatest display at this time of year. So we hope you enjoy it. David, as I said, has literally dominated Australian theatre since the very early 1970s. No one in the history of this country has such a record of constant and successful play writing. But as I'll tell you, that is not the end of his achievement. He has also been important in creating a contemporary Australian theatre and he has described himself as a storyteller to the tribe, the tribe being we people who are gathered here this evening. His biographer, Brian Kiernan, <coughs> speaks of David's work as quoting, as, as constituting, and I quote, an ongoing critical chronicle of our times, a discerning analysis of changing social attitudes and shifting ethical concerns. At the age of 12, I suddenly thought to myself, gee, if the Jews have got a God, the Christians have got a God, the Muslims have got a God, the ancient Greeks have got many gods, and, and, and this is crazy. I mean, you know, one particular tribe can't have a, a God and all the other tribes their God is wrong. Um, uh, I mean, basic logic shows you that the whole business is, 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 is nonsense. And when it gets to uh, when it gets to the point where um, where your God is telling you to go and kill um, the other believers in another God, you know it's gone right off the rails. Um, uh, I look. It's hard for the human psyche to think that this life is it, or for many of us, it's not hard for me, I don't think it's hard for Christians, it's not hard for a lot of people. We're, we're incredibly fortunate that uh, a particular sperm hit a particular egg at a particular time and we're given um, a life. And we want to use that life as well and as fully as we can. We want to get as much love and affection and, um, uh, and good things into it as we can. But, um, the thought that some poor person in their 90s with severe Alzheimer's will suddenly be re re resurrected in an afterlife and, and live eternally in bliss. Uh, you know, like, yeah. I mean, face it, we're, uh, we're, we're very lucky to be here. We don't need anything beyond that. Uh, we, we're a billion to one chance that we made it. Um, enjoy it. How you view democracy function in this ideologically driven and polarised society we've created? Excellent question. Yeah, it is. Um, it is worrying when you look at uh, uh, American politics. Indeed, when you look at ours, uh, nobody seems to be changing their mind on the basis of evidence. It's very hard to uh, to get any opinion shift uh, anywhere. It seems that once we've we've adopted a political ideology will stick with it to the very death, and in this case it could be the death of the American monetary system. I mean the Tea Party uh, people are real extremists in one sense, in that they, they simply don't want to be taxed or they don't want their tax money uh, to be paying for the health of the poor. Uh, it, you know, all of that, well it's their bad luck if they're poor, it's not my bad luck if I want my tax to go to them. Um, but they're quite happy for their tax to go to uh, a huge military machine that is uh, that is making the world not a better place um, at all. Uh, but those positions are so entrenched uh, and so emotionally held that it it is worrying uh, that um, that rational debate seems to not even be cutting through in uh, Australian and um, and American political context. I don't. I, I think it's still the least worst system. Uh, I, I think that the, the Plato's and his wise men could very easily lead a country astray um, in a way that they thought was great, but uh, certainly didn't suit the rest of the, uh, the population. Um, so I'm still a believer in democracy, but it's, it's certainly turned ugly lately. <laughs>